Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Peter Giesman here from AJS. It's my privilege to welcome to you this morning, uh, Chris Sherwin. Chris is from sunny Geelong. And uh, <laughs> welcome along, Chris. Thank you, Peter. Welcome, everybody. It's great to have you back again. And uh, we're continuing our series in basic setting for gemstones. We're using uh, dining blocks and collet plates. And uh, if you'd like to give us a little recap on what we did last week, Chris, and uh, tell us all about what we're going to get into this week. That'd be my pleasure. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, we'll do a quick recap. Last week, we introduced the tools in making collets, our, uh, our trusty doming blocks and punches, and, and of course, our actual collet plates and the punches that go with the collet plates. And as I said last week, uh, the first plate you want to buy is your round plate because it's the, the core of everything that you make in uh, gem setting when you're making settings for collets or uh, collet settings for gemstones. So last week we went through the various preparations for, of material, uh, whether you're using a strip of silver or gold, you know, roughly 0.9 thick and the height that you need for your collet plus a little bit extra. We went through the technique of uh, pre-bending your material if you wish to pre-bend the material or to cut it out of sheet metal because your collet is going to be tapered. So ultimately your material has to be curved and tapered in. And we also talked about the tricky challenge of making collets using the doming blocks where you start with the washer so you're starting with a very flat disc shape of material, having a little hole in the center of it, and then using the doming block to, to dome it into a little hemisphere. So sort of a half, half roundish disc, if you like, and then moving it from the doming block into the collet plate to make the fully tapered collet to 30, 35 degrees as a collet. And that, that technique is the one you use when you don't want any sole the joint in your collet. So that was last week. And, and uh, this week? This week, we've, uh, we've all gone to AJS. We've got our collet plate. We've made a basic collet. We're ready to go. And I, I do hope you have a good look at what, what's available because uh, Steve, in, uh, Steve in Melbourne will look after you. He's always got six or eight or 10 different shape plates there. And it's very exciting when you move from around into another shape. It's, uh, you, you really do come up with some amazing, amazing things. So this week, we're going to take that collet shape, the basic round shape, and we're going to make a claw setting from it. I'm going to show you how to take it from a very simple tapered cone and then mark it out segment it, work out how many claws you want to have, how much detail you want to have on the side of that collet, and then prepare that to go into a ring shank. So ultimately, here's a, just a little sample. This is a ring. Uh, it a, has a solid shoulder on it, a little bit, a little bit thicker at the top there. And the collet just comes off because I fitted that to the ring, but this is actually a, a hexagonal collet. So it's six sided a six-sided stone and I've actually made a cut on that to allow it to fit onto the ring ring shape itself because it will then be soldered into position on that. Now if you look at that collet it's very plain on the side it's very flat has flat little sides all tapering down so six little sides being hexagonal but it has no decorative detail. So what we're going to do today is Get our, our, our diamond shape, our diamond, our diamond stone, and make a collet that has saw piercing and claws on it. And this is actually in three pieces, this particular collet. So I've actually cut that in, into two sections, which gives you three, two saw cuts, gives you three pieces, and it gives you the decorative effect and it enables you to make the claw setting. So We've got our basic cone shape, which we've finished off in our collet plate. The first thing you have to do when you complete your collet, when you've done all of that squeezing and, and, and punching, 
is to make sure that your collar is fully annealed at the end of the process because you've done a lot of work you put a lot of tension into that piece and when you cut it up when you do saw cuts and you file it up you're going to release a lot of the tension in that shape so the first thing you do before you actually mark out the collet is to fully anneal the collet so it's quite soft. That's, that's quite important. So to pick up from last week, I'm going to take my collet plate because before we mark out, I've already annealed my piece, but before we mark out our collet, I'm going to make sure that the collet is absolutely flat and flush with the top of the plate because when I start to mark with my really lovely dividers, very, very sensitive dividers, and I, and I recommend you buy a really good set of dividers, these are exceptionally good. If the top of your collet is flat, then all of your marking occurs from the top of the collet using the, the, the leg of the dividers. And you'll find that all of your claws are exactly the same height. And if your filing is accurate, everything will be accurately in position. So it's important to take your annealed finished collet, place it on your plate and file the top down to the top of the plate or down to a level which is gonna make it absolutely parallel to the face of the plate. Very important. This one I've pre-prepared, it's, it's pretty well there. Just gonna go into a second cut file from an O cut to a second cut. And if you wanted to, you could then run over it with say a 600 emery. Give yourself a nice smooth flush finish. Take that out of the plate, back in again, just check by eye, make sure that the top of that collet is absolutely parallel with the top of your plate. So now I can put my plate aside, it's done its job. So in making a six claw setting from that tapered collet, I need to do several things. I need to mark how deep I want the U shape on my claw to be, so the gap between each claw, and I need to mark where each claw is gonna be. So if you don't have a really good quality template, I mean, I've got a very good quality plastic template, which gives me divisions of four. There are little black lines in that template. It's a good idea to place the collet in the template till it just fits in, and then you can mark off east and west, you can certainly mark two lines off to start with that are opposite each other. Now, remember you might have a join in the collet. So it's probably a good idea to not put the join down the center of the claw. I would have the, the, the join in an area of the collet where I'm gonna do most of my filing and cutting away because then I'm gonna be removing most of the solder join. One of the difficulties in making jewellery is you've got to keep an eye on where your joins are. And in making a precision collet, you want to make sure that the join is in a spot that's not going to give you problems later. So I pre-prepared this setting and I've made sure that my join is going down through the gap. But the templates, they're also available from a good jeweller supplier. So AJS will have templates. Um, very, very handy. So once I've marked my first two lines, I'll then use my dividers, set my dividers so that from each point, I can find two more points between those initial points so that I end up with one, two, three, four, five, six claws. And use your dividers. And then if you can't see the lines, go in with a very fine, sharpie, fine line of pen. So you'll end up with something like this. So again, it's a little bit hard to see. I'll hold up a piece of paper here. Perhaps you can see it a bit better. But my collet has five little marks on the very top. It's a little bit shiny. 
but there are actually five black marks there. You might just see them there. And that's where I'm going to file down in between because one of those marks lines up with one of my solder joins. So I know by cutting down and filing in, you'll see it get removed, but I'll be able to cutting, cutting most of my solder join out. So I've marked my five claws. Now, before I do any cutting, you need to do all of your marking out. So back to your trusty dividers. I need to work out how deep I want the little U shapes on my claw. So I'll perhaps draw this up on a piece of paper. I'm hoping you can see that. So that's my basic collet shape. My top is absolutely flat. And I've now marked on the top where my six claws are going to be. They've been marked on the top of the collet. And I'm going to take my dividers and I'm going to set my dividers so that they scribe from the very top surface of the collet a mark all the way around the collet at a certain depth. So I want to have a line, a scratch line, a very fine scratch around my collet so that when I do my saw cut for the shapes in between the claws, I'm cutting down exactly to that line. So I'm going to be doing a saw cut that does this. And there'll be six saw cuts coming straight down to that line. And after I've done the saw cuts, I'm going to hew them out with my wrap tail file. So all of that material will be removed. That will be my U shape. So first the saw cut to the line, then a U shape with a rat tail file, and I'll be doing that six times. And what I will end up with, I hope, if I've done it properly, and I'll leave my claws very wide just so that you can see, you wouldn't make them this heavy, but this just shows you where the claws come from on the collet. So that material six times will be removed and the white bits in between, these are gonna be my upright pillars, my claws. So it's important before you do any cutting at all to mark your claw positions, to set your dividers, and we'll work out how far you want your U shape to be and your cut to be. And it's one other thing we have to think about too. If I want to call it like this one here, which is quite complicated, which actually has three sections to it, I need to think about how the collet is going to sit on the ring. So the collet actually needs to be filed at the base so that it will sit on the finger because the band is going to come off here. And so the bottom of the collet has to match the curvature of the band. So I've got a job to do there. And if I want my collet to be even more sophisticated and be what we call a pierced collet, so it looks like someone's pierced holes in it like they do in porcelain, you get those little triangle shapes and all sorts of shapes as I have in my fancy collet. I'm gonna to have to have another line on this collet. I've just drawn a second line there because I'm gonna cut the collet apart at that line so that I can then file the top shape, give it a bit more scalloping, and then I'm gonna bring the two parts together again. So it might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but this collet is going to end up being in two pieces, a lower, a lower half, and an upper half. The upper half will have the claws and the lower half will have, uh, I'll, I'll file some shapes into it. So you can actually see that the collet then has a fancy sort of pattern to it. I'll just put a bit of scalloping in there. So that's that second line. You can see that I've added this fancy scalloping. And the only way to do that is to cut the collet in half, file it into shape, and then each one of these small points has to be resold as the two halves come together again. Hope I haven't lost anyone yet. 
All will be revealed in the goodness of time. All will be revealed. Yeah. Okay, so that's just so that you know where we're going so it all makes sense because a lot of people make up collets and they think, well, what do I do next? What, how am I going to get all of this fancy work happening? So let's do it. So I've marked out now six claws. And on this particular sample here, I've done two lines, an upper line and a lower line with my dividers just placing the dividers very carefully on top of, the, of that very flush collet top. So it's very important that it sits on the top and that's your, uh, your leveling point. I'm sure there's a description for it by a surveyor. Once I've got my scribe lines, I know what I'm working to. And I've started to file this one up and cut this down with a saw blade. So I'm going to get in with the saw frame. Uh, where's my other sample? I'll go into this one with the six, the six marked claws. I'm going to go into this one. Now, they're a little bit hard to hold on to. So I'd recommend you get yourself some round and flat nose pliers. The round side going inside, the flat on the outside. You can also buy pliers and you can uh, modify them. I've got some of those. So... Let me just find where my join is, where my black line is. I'm going to go in here very carefully from the top and mark each one by reversing the blade up. There's one. Texture doesn't last forever. There's two. Just a basic cut. Three, four, not oh, going too fast. Five, and six. Of course, you could have an eight claw, you could have a four claw setting. You can have five claws if you want, but most people have even numbers. So I've now done six little cuts at the top so I can keep checking to make sure that I'm spaced my claws evenly. So I'm gonna to go to my first cut. I'll go to this one here. And I'm gonna now cut down to that first line that I scribed with the dividers. If I can get hold of it. Just keep checking your angles. I'm just going to pull up just shy of that line. So I've now got a single saw cut coming down that line. You would now repeat that six times. So you've got six cuts coming down. But I'm in a hurry this morning, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit. If you've got any questions, just shoot them through to Peter and I can stop and try to answer them for you. Just got a comment from uh, Kay, Chris. Uh, hi, Chris. Totally agree about the uh, making sure the join is not in the middle of the U-shape between the claws. can be quite annoying. Laugh out loud. It, it, it can be. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, Kay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it can be annoying when you've soldered onto the ring shank and you've got the join in the wrong spot and the join bleeds and then your claw goes or the collet comes apart. Not a, not a good look. No. Good to always know where your joins are. So I've now cut my six lines down and I'm going to use a, a, a rat tail. Probably an O cut, quite a rough rat tail to start with. And I'm going to open that claw out. Now the reason you, I'm only doing one because I've got a couple of samples here. But it's important that you keep your six claws happening at the same time because as you file in and you use more and more of your rat tail, the claws will start opening out as you go down. And it's very important that you maintain the spacing between the claws because if your spacing is wrong, then your claws will all be different widths. And you don't want that. You want your jewellery is all about being neat and Tidy and even. 
So I'm opening up, I'm following that saw cut down. And that's the one, of the one of the benefits of having a saw cut is that it gives you something to visually follow, but you're actually your fire will, will, will tend to follow the weakness in the metal. But it's, it's all about maintaining that visual connection to your jewellery. Now I'm working on a little bit of an angle. Some people like to have tapered file cuts in their collets. Some people like them to be dead straight. So if I wanted to be straight across, I'd go now to the opposite side. I'm gonna cut down on the opposite side because in theory, you've cut down on all of your, your six claws. Just check that that's straight, it is. Cut down to my line. Just come up a little bit short and repeat the process with your O cut rat tail file. Of course, you could use another shape file, you could use a triangle if you wanted to. You want to have a different shape claw. And you can also do this with burrs, uh, a, uh, a phrase, uh, what do they call them, fisher burrs, or a uh, flame burr you could probably use as well. Probably speed up the process. It would just depend on how, how skilled you are at using burrs. But today we'll just use the files. Sounds like there's a canary loose in here. <laughs> and I've now got those two half rounded claws roughly half the way down. So if I wanted to, I could now go across both claws at the same time or both U shapes at the same time just to get them even. So I'm now working across two at the same time. So rather than angling, I'm now going straight across. Turn the collet around because remember your file is tapered. So it's important you do the same to both sides. Down they come till you get to your line. So I haven't haven't reached my line, but I just wanted to show you that that actual technique for, for bringing it down. I now have two two U shapes at the front there. They're about halfway down to my line, and from the top, you might just pick up the two the two U shapes. But uh, I've got, got one prepared here, which I've done one, two, three, four. I've done out of this one. So a little, few more U-shapes out of that one. And the claws, I've just got two, two more to do. But again, as you, as you cut them out, you can then visually look at them and just see what your spacing is like. It's very important to keep your spacing accurate, otherwise your claws will have different widths to them. So I might do just a little bit of work on this one to finish that one off. Because four are done already. And I'm going to cheat because I, I can. Because <laughs> I love my tools. Um, I'm going to use a uh, flame burr. Just, just speeds the process up a little bit if you... Uh, saves your files. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good for people to see uh, more than one way of doing something anyway, Chris. That's right, Peter. There's, there's lots of ways to skin a cat, as they say.
right now people are thinking i wonder when my next dentist appointment is yeah <laughs> i can do cheap fillings <laughs> <laughs> very painful though no anesthesia here <laughs> So you just use whatever technique you you think's appropriate to, to your skill level and your comfort zone. Let me just check this one. It's about that far up the file. I mean, you're always going to have to go back in with the file. Finish it off. This claw is already three three quarters done with that burr. It's very quick if you can burr them out. And that one's done. So bur burring is very quick. But you have to do what you feel confident in doing. Done with the bird. A little bit hard to get back in there again with the fire, but I'll manage it. Six, six claws on that setting. So it's six, six claws filed out down, down to the depth that I need them. Try to sit that up so you can see them. Put the part of the fingers in the way, but you can turn it around and the six claws come down the same height. If you look from the top, you've got six claws and six U shapes. And it takes, takes a little bit of time, a little bit of practice. But that gets you, and you can just continue to file away using your rat tail files. AJS have really good selection of files because you need to work out how wide you want your claws to be, how wide you want the U-shapes to be, et cetera. So you've just got to keep working at your filing skills so you get exactly the, the shape and size you want. And, of course, don't forget to put your diamond in occasionally just to check that the stone is just sitting inside that collared edge wall there, just sitting on top. And it's, it's given me the look that, I, that I'm after in the finished product. Okay, so I've worked down to my first line. I've done my saw cuts. I've done my ewing out with the rat tail file, et cetera. Um, get that fairly, not, not finished because it's a bit more to do, but that's pretty well pre-prepared. So now I've got my second line to deal with, which is the line where I'm going to cut the collet in half, if you like, or in two sides. And... You wouldn't believe it, but I've already prepared a sample here uh, and I've started my saw cut. So I'm going to cut this one apart. This one only, this is the one I was working on before. It only has uh, two cores started. So what I have to very carefully do is use a fairly fine blade and follow that second line and part the collet, actually cut the collet apart. Now mine's already apart because I've done the work. So I'd work my way around. And before I actually separate the collet, I'm going to go back to my drawing and I'm going to put this little curve shape in here for my band. Because when this sits on the band, it has to be a complete circle. And that collet needs to have a little... Uh, 
filed base to it that has a, has a curve in it. So I go back to my collet and I use my files on the bottom. Again, it's not a random curve. You have to make sure it lines up with the claw that you want it to line up with or the space that you want it to line up with. And I'm now filing the bottom of the collet and I'm filing it to the point where it marries my file. So I'm gonna file it from both sides. And I've already done the work on this one. So I'm just uh, demonstrating how that happens. And I'd now be going to my ring mandrel and to make sure that that collet is gonna sit on the mandrel at the finger size that the customer wants. So this one is presently sitting at size P for Peter. It's not for you, Peter, though. Oh. No, no. It's at size P and it's sitting beautifully on the mandrel and that's actually what you want the bottom of the collet to do, to marry the mandrel at the customer's ring size. This just happens to be P. So I've done that. I've now got my U shapes, my six claws at the top, I've got my uh, seating area to go on the band and I'm going to continue cutting it out and cutting the collet apart, which I've almost done. And take your time doing this because you've got to follow that line absolutely precisely. Because when you cut a collet apart, the metal that you're cutting away, the blade thickness is going to be missing from your collet. If that makes sense. Of course it makes sense because you cut it away. But it means that when you put the pieces together again, they won't exactly fit anymore. Another good thing too is get your pen before I do the dirty on myself and make sure I've got a line that connects the two sides of that collet because when they come apart, I want them to go back in exactly the same spot. Good tip. Just, Good tip. just, just in time. <laughs> so I've got a nice line. Almost got this one apart. at the end. Just want to chop the fingers here. If you're ever feeling uncomfortable chopping on the on the peg, just make sure you use your uh, those those round and flat pliers. They are they are fantastic. They're they're one of the after the parallels are the ones I use the most often. Just get your fingers out of the way and saves them for another day. <laughs> I think every jeweler remembers cutting their fingers a few times. I've, I've done a few beauties and I don't want to do it today. Okay, so it's almost a part. I can probably finish that off with my fingers. There we go. I've now cut the collet into pieces. <laughs> but for Why a is the question? Why? Well, because in this particular design, what, I, what, I, what I'd like to end up with is sort of U-shapes. So if I just turn my page, I want my collet to look something like this. So I want U-shapes like this. And to do that, I've had to take the whole collet. And as I said, we've cut down to the first line that gave us the U-shapes, but I've had to cut down to the second line to pull them apart so that I can file this part away from each of those scallops. And the only way to do that is to either drill a hole and get in there with the saw frame and pierce them out, hence the description pierce collet, but really most collets are 
filed into shape to create these little U shapes. So these two pieces of the collar now are separate, but because I've cut this piece off at the bottom here, I'm now able to file that out and get a beautiful U shape. And then I'll resolder here and here and six spot, spots around the collar, resolder it together. And people will go, geez, how did he do that? It's a miracle. Well, some people might think that. <laughs> your, your customer, you want your customers to think that you're pretty special, but uh, it's just, just good old hard work. Indeed. So here I am, I'm going to, yeah, I'm just gonna quickly file two more shapes so I can show you what those U shapes look like. No, I'm not, I'm gonna, having over time. Well, we're sort of running out of time. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. So this is a sample I showed you, which is a little bit difficult to see, but it's actually three pieces. It's a finished collet ready for soldering. And it actually has those beautiful U shapes in it. So I'm gonna pull the binding wire apart and you'll see what I'm talking about. So this is where you get to just before you soldered the three pieces back together again. That's something you'll have to do for your homework. I, I'm giving everyone, I, everyone who knows me as a teacher knows I give homework. So I'm just gonna take the binding wire off. When it comes off, they're all gonna fall apart, of course. Take that off. Snip these through. And I'm gonna have a collet. This one is, as I said, this is more complicated. This is three pieces. The one I was working on before is just two pieces. That was my lovely binding wire. I was ready to solder this together, but that's okay. It's uh, relatively easy to make two more bits of binding wire. That's quite fine binding wire. It's probably um, 22 gauge or something, quite, quite fine. So as it comes apart, I'm gonna make a little space here. I have one, two, three pieces. You probably can't see those on the screen, can you? No, just out of the picture there. Just, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set them up here on my piece of paper. Lost one already. So here's my beautiful little U shape. Has the six claws on the top and it's been filed at the bottom. And you can just see them there, they're beautiful little U shapes. So the collet has a consistent thickness, like a, uh, I guess like a little archway. And this is the second part of my collet. And here's the base of that collet. So I actually have three pieces. This is a bit that fits onto the finger. This piece has little U shapes on it, which is just a little feature, they go down on top, whoops, try to put them together. That's two pieces together. So they have little archways, little gaps in between. And this is my really nicely sculpted U-shape six claw collet, which goes on top of that piece. See if I can balance them. Ooh, a bit hard. And there they are all together. So this is how you create a collet that has character, it has the design in it you want to have. You could have wavy lines, you can have triangles, U shapes, W shapes, circles, whatever you like to have. And you can create something which is interesting for your customer, it's unique. It fits your gemstone perfectly. Uh, and uh, yeah, it gives it a sophistication that a lot of people can't, uh, can't work out. And that's, that's the mystery of jewelry, right? You want to have sophistication. So you'll be able to uh, supply some nice close-ups of those for us. We can publish on the uh, Facebook post later. I will. I'll do that. I'll take some photos and we'll publish those on Facebook. So this one, I don't want to ruin it because I've spent a lot of time. This one's really looking through my beady glass there. It's, I've done a really nice job getting that lovely sculpted scallop shape just by filing in. So we've got a few more minutes yet. So I'll just show you how to go about that. Here's the, uh, the, the top section, if you like, the same section I've got on my sample, which I've cut apart. I've only got two claws in this one, but I'm gonna put two more claws on fairly quickly and I'll show you how to scallop the bottom part. So I'm gonna go in there.
you can see why you try to do this when it's all together. Because once you get all your pieces small, um, it's quite difficult to do all of this filing. You've got nothing to hold on to. So I guess like all jewellery production, you want to think about the sequences. That's why I sort of showed you that this morning, that if you go into a sequence and you start from the basic collet and you work your way into your claw while it's still in large chunks, you've got plenty to hold on to. Let's check that. Let's check this for size. That's probably the full width of the rat tail. Certainly more difficult once you've chopped it into pieces. There we go. So remember, work on your six or just work on them one at a time. Halfway down, one, two, three, four, five, six, then take them three quarters of the way down your cup and keep checking from the top to make sure your claws and your shapes are equal and even. So no, no cups of coffee in between, I'm afraid, on this job. You've just got to be very consistent as you work through it. Otherwise, you'll see it at the end. And the other side. Coming in from the top. Check my mark. It's okay. Would have helped if I'd done a bit more of a saw cut. side just helps your rat tail file follow down the weakness in the metal people will appreciate that making a handmade collet as opposed to buying one because you can clearly purchase commercial varieties uh, is a lot of work um, but yeah for a you know a diamond ring uh, a good client a reasonable sale uh, you're really going to uh, value add to that to that sale and increase your skill level. Uh, well, as you say, you're creating something unique that um, only that person owns. So. Absolutely, it's that. That's that's the thing that drives us to create something beautiful and unique. Everybody wants skill, and everyone wants something unique. But uh, yeah, it all costs money. It all takes time, and it takes dedication. And uh, that's what you've got to sell to your customers, to your clients, that you, uh, you're committed to something special for them. It's getting hot. Must be silver. That's it. A little bit to the side. I'm just going to, have to angle a little bit to straighten that. But as I say, I'll say it again. It's very important to work on the six all at the same time. A little bit here, a little bit on the next one. Whatever you do to one, do to the next opening. Don't just take them all the way down because you'll end up with an uneven collet. So they just need to go a little bit deeper. Thank you. 
And of course, you don't have to file straight across. Um, you can file on a 45 degree angle and create openings which are nicely tapered. And you can do all sorts of creative things with your collets. You can actually sculpt them afterwards. So you could actually file on the outside if you wanted to, to give them a totally three dimensional effect. Sky's the limit. The design is really up to you and uh, to, to your, you know, your client's expectations and your, your skill level, I guess. So they're not quite done, but they're, they're fairly close. So that's the top of the collet. I've created my claws. To create that beautiful scallet shape, I have to come in from the back now. And I'm now gonna do a saw cut that goes towards the, the, that goes in between those shapes. So I'm sort of coming up towards where my claw would be. And because I've scribed those little lines with my dividers before, I know exactly where to take my cut to. Just on the line now. And then the same on the other side, where am I on there? Opposite side. So I'm sort of heading as if I was going to cut the claw in half, but from the back. So I'm saw cutting between the U shapes now, rather than heading towards them. That's done. Then to start the scallop, having over time, but getting pretty close to time, I'm going to come in now with a Triangular file, just find my gutsy little triangle here somewhere. There it is, I've got a nice, nice triangular with a safety edge on it, which I've created. And I'm gonna go into that saw cut. So it's always a saw cut first. And then open up with your triangle. it the other side down to the bottom of the cut and then I'd either use the triangle or a knife edge, or you could use a barrette, doesn't matter, as long as you've got some sort of safety edge somewhere. Uh, let's see, I've got a barrette here somewhere. So I might just continue with my triangle. There's one, oh, there's a barrette that might do it as well. Go back into the cut, and I'm gonna roll that cut out now to start creating a bit of curvature. I'm rolling out to the right. Barret back into the cut, and then I'm rolling out to the left. Because it's almost like a gothic arch. It's got that little peak to it. There we go, like little seagull wings, if you like. Other side. And then the other, so left and right. Use your safety edge on your file or just get very good at your filing. And I'd repeat that six times. So I end up with a scallop, scalloped effect at the base of that section of my collet. They're like little seagull wings. So that would be six times. So I'm just going to draw that on paper so you can see what I've done. I've got my top shape, which I've shaped up with my claws. That's, that's the top of my collet. And what I've done is I've come in 
to my line, my marked line, and I've done a saw cut coming up towards each of the six claws. So a little saw cut, cut up to the line. And then I've gone in with the triangular file and I've triangulated that little line. And now I'm sweeping out to create this sort of little Gothic shape where all of that black material is removed. And that's what gives you this beautiful scalloped U shape between the claws. And then that's reciprocated on the outside as well. So that you end up with this beautiful scalloped pattern, like a wavy pattern, if you like. Mm. And that's repeated for each one. So six times. And you get that lovely U-shaped scrolled section, which is what I've got here. A little bit hard to see at this scale, but it's a beautiful little U-shape. And then I can reintroduce my lower, the lower half that I cut off. So it goes back on again. The bottom half will go on. This is the bit that has the, um, the U shape for the finger. So those two pieces will come together again and I'm gonna to have to solve them at this point and at this point and at the six points that the little scallop U shape touches and uh, solve them together. I'd say in hard solder if you can and you bring your collet back together again. And then it's of course filing and shaping, cleaning up and you've then handmade a, a, a six claw setting from a solid collet. Well done, Chris. So all in a rush, but <laughs> a very sophisticated job really when you think about it, a lot of skill involved, a lot of time but I'm confident that if you can get as far as making that solid collet and you can use your marking out tools and you just take it step by step, you'll start to make some really exciting, quite sophisticated jewelry and then put your own touch to it. So I would encourage you to go to, 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 to get a collet plate from AJS, start with the round one and then you can get into more sophisticated shapes, but your jewelry will then take a, a completely different uh, flavor to it because it'll be uh, much more sophisticated. It won't be just straight up and down. It'll have be more three dimensional, and that's what we're that's what we're after. Mm. Uh, great advice. Now I've got a couple of little comments for you. One from Emine. I think she's still feeling a bit of guilt because she says, "Yes, I'm Emily. still going on my homework from twelve years ago." Hi, Emily. Good to see you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Private thing between you and her. Yeah, yeah, we'll just, uh, I'll just keep piling on the homework. Sorry, it just never <laughs> goes away. <laughs> but that's great. Yeah, you, you never stop learning and it's fabulous to hear from students and, and, and it's, yeah, it, it really takes you to another level, makes you excited about what you do. Oh, that's great. And uh, Fiona has a comment. Uh, sorry, I missed the measurement of the original silver height. Yeah, it's a good question. Look, um, Depends on the height of your stone. So obviously from the table to the culet, you're going to need extra material because you, 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 you're doing damage when you squeeze it up and when you file it up. So I'd probably add two to two and a half millimetres extra height. So most gemstones are, I guess, what, four millimetres deep, three and a half, four millimetres, depending on the size. So you, you'd measure your gemstone from the, from the table to the culet. Uh, this is a very big stone. This is a 12 mil stone, I think, or 10 mil stone. So this one is actually uh, six, six mils deep. So on a six mil stone, you'd have at least eight mils height in collet for your thickness. This, this is only about seven mils, so it's a little bit short. Uh, but yes, you definitely need extra height because the more you cut out of it, the, the smaller the collet becomes in its height. So uh, it's a good, good question. Just but measure your gemstone, make sure you add at least two millimetres in height uh, extra above that. And Ed Nona looked. said, thank you, uh, fantastic. So uh, thanks very much for that advice there. Okay. I'm sure you've helped others in the process. It, it's a good question because uh, again, it does come down to how low the stone sits in the setting as well. So uh, yeah, you have to make allowance for setting. So I would, I would just say, look, if you've never done this before, start on something fairly simple, 
perhaps a four or five millimetre stone, make your collet two or three mils too high and, and give it a go and uh, put it on a simple band and then either set it yourself or get a setter to set it and you'll work out, oh, gee, I made a mistake there. It, it's quite a difficult part of making jewellery is understanding the relationship between all of the dimensions and what's going to happen when stones are set. In the end, you've just got to do it, hey? You do, you do have to learn by your mistakes and by experience. Uh, I think a lot of people don't try things because they worry. And if you just work in something simple like silver and you make a few mistakes, it's no problem. You can always start again. <laughs> Indeed. That's a, uh, a good comment, good thing for people to remember. So we'll wrap things up there for today, Chris, but uh, you'll be back like Arnie, I'm sure. I'll, I'll be back like Arnie at some stage. I look forward to everyone coming back again. So don't forget, go to AGS, look at the collar plates, look at the stones you've got, give it a go. I absolutely encourage you to give it a go. It's, it's a great feeling. Excellent. Thanks for your words of advice and uh, your great expertise on the display, Chris, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, everyone. See you, Casey, see you, Emily, see everybody else. Take, have a great day.